what really needs to happen is, and what the data shows is, that we need to bring manual testing from 60 to 80 percent down to the to the 50 to 5 to 20 percent. It's not going to disappear. I agree. Manual testing is very important on some key elements. It's not worth automating everything. You can't automate everything. Some areas are really hard to automate, and the cost is just too high. But we have to reduce that if we want to deliver continuously, or we want to deliver uh, in a shortened period of time. And so. Automation has to increase, and the way automation has to increase, as you will see in a minute, is you have to go beyond the user interface. UI testing is not enough for testing a application and automating the tests for a distributed application for web services with RESTful APIs, with all the heterogeneity that we have. So it's about increasing the percent of automation to about 60 to 80 percent, of which a large portion will become more and more API testing. <coughs> so a couple of things that this, that this means is shifting testing to the left. I'm not going to iterate that too much, but basically what, what that means is really bringing in your quality assurance, your testers repre represented inside the team from the very beginning. When you do the project initiation, you start defining the test strategy, testing has to be involved and has to work throughout the process. It has to, you have to incent your developers to do unit testing. I saw the case study this morning. That's where they started. You're right. If you don't, that's building quality in, by the way, from the very beginning. And so you have to incent them to, you know, developers to unit test. Basically, it means that when they're forecasting the development, you should include that in the forecasting. Don't, don't leave it on their shoulders like unit testing is above what you're estimated. That means they have to work overnight or on the weekends. They're not going to do that. Or your, if you have a provider, make sure it's in the contract, clearly stating. Um, and have testers work with product owners and business analysts from the beginning, throughout the sprints, and start delivering. Remember, this is all about delivering more value to the business sooner. But it also, we talk about shift right. We're also, today I heard uh, again, you know, testing in production. We're doing more and more of that. It also means bringing analytics, bringing data from production, putting the monitoring tools in the hands of your, you, know, you guys developers to use that to see how the application is behaving in production to prevent things from happening. There's all sorts of great things that are happening in this space that we, that we will be, you know, uh, I think, leveraging more and more. But it's also leveraging the social networks, what are people telling, saying about the application, and feeding that back into the delivery cycle, right? How can you do that? Um, last but not least, it's about simulating and service virtualization. With this complex environment, how do you test continuously? You've got all these dependencies, right? ING has 150 Scrum teams. PayPal has 680 Scrum teams across the world. There's no project manager in this room or outside that can plan all that going on and you know, not get hung up with the dependencies. There's no tool that will allow you to do that. The only way you can do that is if you start simulating, breaking things up. SOA is, you know, or we call it service, uh, uh, microservices and, and containers going to help, of course, go into that direction. It helps if you, if you segregate things into smaller chunks and make them you know, loosely coupled, of course. But service for things you can't do that, for you don't always have access to the mainframe, and you need to have that access, you can't wait for that, or you're testing with a third-party service, service utilization, or if you're using open source, mock-upping, you know, instead of having the developer develop those stubs, you get that from the tools for you. And what happens is that now you can test and integrate on a continuous basis. That's actually how you start doing integration testing from the beginning. It's introducing simulation in the development process. What an idea. This is used you know, in many of the industries. We haven't really in the software industries. I like to think about this as a, a, a wind tunnel, right? where you put the airplane, and it tests the airplane by simulating all the, air, the conditions around it. Well, that's what we need to do. And service utilization helps you get there.